Imagine life, your life, before you were born. Your disembodied consciousness drifts blissfully through space and time with no sense of self or of separation from the cosmic energy all around you. You have no opinion of the celestial wonders scattered across the vast canvas of space. No judgments, only a peaceful sense of oneness and being. And then, one day, you are born. And from this moment on, you begin sensing and judging your environment, developing thoughts, feelings, and opinions about your world, and feeling separated from all other forms of energy. It's as if your consciousness has suddenly been encased in a glass box, isolating you from other entities and forms of consciousness. You then make up little stories about each experience or observation and paste mental images of these stories on the inside of your glass box so you won't forget what you discovered. This process is much like putting photos and reminder notes on a bulletin board or refrigerator. At first, the stories you post are very simple, such as being hungry is bad, being fed is good, being alone is bad, being held is good, being held and fed is even better, being held, fed, rocked and sung to is better still. And so it continues as the stories become more and more complex. The more stories you post on your wall, the easier it is to judge new experiences and discoveries as you now have something to compare them to. Things are now quickly judged as being good or bad, right or wrong, and so on, based on comparisons to what is already on your wall. And thus, the ability to make entirely objective observations is slowly replaced with limited subjective comparisons to the tiny library of stories inside of your glass box. As you move through childhood, you begin including not only your own judgments and observations, but the judgments of others as well. Those of your parents, your teachers and coaches, your friends, even the bully across the street has a say in the stories and images you post on your wall. As children, we still have many portals for gazing past our self-made images and limited points of view beyond our tiny glass box and out into the mysterious universe, allowing us, at least from time to time, to break away from our self-made world and experience the cosmos as it truly is. But as teenagers, we are already running out of open space to post these mental images. We have made subjective judgments about different kinds of people, about ourselves, who we are and how we fit into the world, even about our personal value and worth, and pasted them on our walls. Now the world inside our glass box seems more real to us than the world beyond and so we succumb to it entirely. The illusion, which we call reality, is now complete. In a sense, our reality has also become our prison, for we can no longer see beyond it. And since this minuscule world is now all we know, we desperately cling to it and to the sense of security it provides, as well as to the self-imposed limitations. These people are good, those are bad. These are things I can do, those are things I can't, and so on. No longer looking beyond our box at any other reality, we eventually forget that other realities exist or ever did. From this point forward, most of us simply go about our lives covering older images with newer but similar ones those that reinforce the images and stories we already have, adding further still to our imagined sense of security and our certainty in the reality we've created. 
in a never-ending quest to give meaning to absolutely everything. Although an infinite number of other possible scenarios exist for every image and story we've embraced or created, we usually see only what is right in front of us on the walls of our glass box. We've stopped looking beyond our box so we cannot see other realities or possibilities, nor do we realize that we're the ones who created the reality we do see and few of us are aware of what is happening. We believe we're still looking outside the box at the real world, exactly the way it really is, instead of staring at a finite collage of opinions, judgments, interpretations, and stories. Most of us are profoundly unaware that true reality is little more than the potential that exists before our minds label something with meaning. Before we decide if a thing or experience is good or bad, beautiful or ugly, a problem or an opportunity, it is the uncarved block of pure potential referred to in Taoism that exists in all things before they are exposed to perception before they are compared or weighed and measured, before we decide what they mean. Reality is an empty canvas awaiting the artist's brush. And we are the artists. We have the awesome power to transform reality into nearly anything we choose, love or hate, good or evil, possibilities or limitations. The power we have over our lives is beyond our imagining. If only we knew, if only we could see. The irony of this vast power is that we've been using it all along, without even knowing, and as such, we've blindly painted ourselves into a single miniature world instead of a thousand ever-expanding possibilities. We're like actors and filmmakers who begin believing that the movies and characters they've created are real. Your glass box is what the uncarved block of true reality becomes once it has been exposed to you. And we're not the only ones experiencing this illusion of our own making. Everyone else is doing the exact same thing. So the question is, what can we do with this understanding? How can we use it to improve our lives and gain greater power? Is there a way to move beyond the confines of our self-made world and out into a universe of unlimited possibilities? Is it possible to use our power to create reality in a more powerful way? Could we consciously decide what stories and images to post on our walls? Could we replace the haphazard realities we've arbitrarily created with ones that better serve us by replacing the stories that limit us with ones that leave us empowerful? Or better still, could we learn to step completely out of our glass box, leaving our stories all behind to see the world as it truly is, a playground for our imaginations, an uncarved block waiting for us to liberate the masterpiece within. And the answer, of course, is yes and yes again. For now that you have an inkling of what your world really is, little more than stories that you yourself have written, all you need to do is learn how to write the stories that serve you and discard the ones that don't. Most of us, however, will spend the bulk of our lives unconsciously writing stories that draw us deeper and deeper inside the illusions of our limited glass box world. But what if you could stop these automatic stories, literally think outside the box, mentally stepping beyond the limiting perspective and subjective interpretations of your current reality? What if you could see reality as it really is? What if you stopped accepting your reality at face value? 
What if you could begin consistently questioning your interpretations, asking the question, is this true? Am I absolutely certain that mine is the only possible interpretation or point of view? And what if you learn to consistently ask, am I positive that this is a problem? Could it somehow be a benefit? And if so, how? Could I be focusing on the wrong thing or asking the wrong questions? Could the solutions and benefits be right in front of me? What would happen if I consistently asked the question, what is great about this? Instead of why me or who did this? How might this way of seeing and questioning your reality change your life, affect your family and career? And we're not just better at solving problems when we're outside the box. We're better at everything. More creative, more effective, more powerful, more peaceful, more loving, more joyful, more free. The farther outside your box you get, the closer you come to enlightenment. And while drifting outside your box, objectively observing the world around you. You are now able to see and respond to everything in an entirely different way. From outside your box, you see everyone for who they really are. Innocent beings trapped inside of boxes they don't understand or even know exist. Feeling and behaving the only way they know how, based on the pictures and stories that make up their world. And suddenly, you are overwhelmed with compassion. For now, you fully understand what Shakespeare meant when he wrote, All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. For in truth, the world is but an accidental fabrication of our own mind, with us, the players, merely reacting and responding to the only world we see. Yet from this point forward, you are no longer a prisoner. You can escape your tiny self-made world as often as you like. Just close your eyes, breathe in deeply, and imagine yourself stepping beyond your box, past your limiting stories and the automatic feelings and behaviors they evoke. Then, with long, deep breaths, imagine gently blowing toward your box, each breath carrying the box farther off into the distance, leaving you in the peaceful state of life without stories. You cannot remain in this state for long, for as human beings we must write stories. So within hours, minutes, or even seconds, you'll begin to write again, converting true reality into your reality, which is neither good nor bad. It's just what humans do. We create glass boxes. But we rarely do it with purposeful intention, deciding in advance what inspiring images and powerful stories to post on our walls, allowing us to control how we feel, behave, and perform including what we wish to create and who we want to be. And fewer still realize they can leave their box anytime they wish, even taking along their favorite stories and images if they choose, while leaving the rest behind. As for you, you can now not only leave your box to better understand yourself, but you can learn to understand others by visiting their glass box. When someone describes their thoughts, feelings, and beliefs to you, they're inviting you inside of their glass box so you can better understand what they see on their walls, how they feel, and why they do the things they do. This is a great honor and an opportunity, for it will help you to be more understanding, compassionate, and supportive of them, and possibly even show you how to help them 
climb out of their limiting box as well. Either way, one thing is for certain. Learning to look beyond our stories, taking time to objectively see inside the box of others, and consistently searching for new interpretations and points of view is not only the secret to living a better life, it's also the secret to creating a better world. I'm Mark Fournier, and this is The Glass Box.